Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to show you how to animate a swinging pendulum in Maya. I'll be using your Yolvi Yetiskin's ultimate pendulum rig, which I'll leave a link to in the description. So to get started, I'm first going to create a reference to that rig. So I'm going to go to file, create reference. And I just have it in a folder here. I'm just going to reference the ultimate pendulum. This rig is pretty nice. It has an option here to switch between a couple different aesthetics. So here's a mace. Here's a UFO. I'm just going to stick with the normal look. So jumping right into it, I'm going to be animating this pendulum swinging indefinitely. For that to feel realistic, I'm going to have the base rotate so that it drives the swinging of the pendulum underneath it. So I'll start by doing just that. I'm going to select the base. And I'm just going to rotate it to about right here. It looks pretty good. But then I'm going to go to my channel box and I'm going to set it to a whole number at negative 30. And then I'm going to right click it and key selected to add a keyframe. And then let's say it takes about a second for it to swing to the other side. So I'm going to go down to frame 24, which is one second later. And I'm just going to type 30 in the channel box. And because I have auto keyframes turned on, it just automatically made a keyframe for me. And I don't see my curve yet, so I'm going to select my pendulum here on the left side of my graph editor, and then it makes my keyframes appear. All right, and then I want it to swing back to the original position, so I'm going to go down to frame 48, and I'll just copy that frame at the end there. And I'll go ahead and hit play, and it just stops after one swing. Now what I could do is I could alter the length of my animation to be 48 frames by just typing that in there. And now when I hit play, it'll just loop around. Now it's subtle, but you might notice that there is a little freeze right when the animation goes from 48 to frame one. That's because these frames are actually identical. So we're seeing the same frame twice. It's going to play 48 and it's going to play one again. So what I actually want to do is set my animation to be 47. And now it actually loops perfectly. But let's say I wanted my animation to be a little bit longer. Technically, I wanted this to be a couple of seconds, even though it's going to be looping around over and over. Well, I could make this a longer animation. So let's say I wanted it to play twice. So 48 plus 48 equals 96. Minus one would be 95. And I'll just extend the time range to the full length of the animation. So now it goes twice as long, but I still have the problem of the pendulum stopping right here. Well, I can fix this by setting my animation curve to have a pre and post infinity. And what that means is it basically takes these keyframes and then once it gets to the last keyframe, it will repeat the animation from this first keyframe. So all I need to do is select my curve and I'm going to press this button here to turn on pre infinity cycle. And after I've turned on pre infinity cycle, you can see that the curve is now continuing all the way back indefinitely. And then if I select the same button here, post infinity cycle, the animation repeats this way all the way into infinity. And sure enough, when we hit play, the animation from those three keyframes will continue to loop indefinitely. You may have noticed that there's actually four infinity buttons. The two that I pressed are just standard pre and post infinity. Whereas the other two buttons are infinity cycles with an offset. So if I were to take this last frame here and just move that up, you can see that this next frame in the infinity always starts at the exact same value as this first frame in my actual keyframes. So if I hit play, it'll just jump to that first frame. But if I were to select all these and select post infinity cycle with offset, it will actually compound the difference between this frame and this frame and apply that as an offset to the animation into infinity. So if I now press play, 
And I will extend the length of my animation further just so we can see this. It's just going to keep going like this forever. So that's not necessarily what we want for this animation, but I just wanted to show that off so that you know what that means. So I'm going to undo until we get to here. And I'm just going to make sure that these are post infinity cycle, but without the offset. So now we've got this nice animation going. But the pendulum is really stiff, so let's start animating that next. But before we can animate that, I need to explain a concept called forward kinematics. And all forward kinematics means is it's a system where connected joints affect joints further down the line in a hierarchy. So for example, this base is the top joint of the entire pendulum, and everything that happens to this joint is then transferred down to all the other joints below it. Then when I go down to this joint, everything that happens to this joint is transferred to all the joints beneath that, but it does not affect the base. And then the same thing for this joint and the same thing for this joint. So we can think of forward kinematics as all the properties of the higher up joints moving forward through the hierarchy of joints. So it's just something to keep in mind as you're animating is that everything you do on the higher joints is going to affect the ones below it. And it's especially important for this pendulum swing example. Later on, once you're animating more complicated rigs, you'll encounter something called inverse kinematics as well, where joints lower in the hierarchy affect the joints above them. But we won't get into that today. So to animate the rest of this, I'm going to go ahead and go to frame one again. And what's nice is if I hold shift and select each of them, I can then rotate them all at once. Now the starting keyframe is assumed to be after a swing in this direction. So we're going to start with the momentum of the pendulum going this way. And I'm just going to set this to negative 30 as well. Then I'll right click that and key selected. And then just like before, I'm going to go to frame 24, make that a positive 30. And then frame 48, negative 30 again. And see, this is curved up much more than this one, but that's because it's inheriting the rotation of this joint and this joint. So really, this is turning like a full 90 degrees or a full 120 if you include the base as well. Let's go ahead and press play on that. Ah, it worked for a second, but it broke. That's because we need to set the infinity on each of these curves. So it's not just once and so it's not just once and done. You have to do it with all of the animation curves you want to repeat. So with all those selected, I'm going to select the keyframes and select pre and post infinity. So now let's press play. And there we go. That's starting to feel pretty good. However, it still doesn't feel quite realistic. It feels like these are all sort of moving as one, almost as if the pendulum is leading the swinging of the base, whereas we want the base to be driving the swinging of the pendulum. So to do that, we need to apply the animation principle of overlapping action and follow through. So the idea behind overlapping action and follow through animation is that parts of a animated subject will move semi independently from the main action of the object. So the main action of this object is the swing of the pendulum base, whereas the pendulum part is moving with it, but it is dragging behind. And then when the base turns around, the swinging of the pendulum follows through past the base. So the overlapping action would be the pendulum swinging behind the base. And then the follow through animation would be the pendulum swinging past the base on the turn. So to accomplish that, we need to start offsetting some of these curves. So I'm going to select all three of these joints. And now if I just click one of these keyframes, you'll see that there's overlapping keyframes. So we'll just want to offset these all so they're not all on the same frame. 
And then I'm just going to select all three of these and move them down one frame by holding shift and then middle mouse button. All right. And that's not very much. That's not very noticeable yet. So I'm just going to select these two joints here and then I'll just select the keyframes on just those two joints. Holding shift and middle mouse button. I'm going to need to move them down one more frame. Press play. That's a little bit of an improvement. And once more, I'm going to select the last joint. Hold shift and middle mouse button. Slide to the right by one. And there we go. Now it's starting to feel a little bit more like this base is swinging the pendulum and they're not all moving as one piece. However, I think we can make this look a little bit better. So I'm going to select all these joints again. And now I'm going to go through each joint and pad out the keyframes by three frames each rather than one. So we already moved each one once. I'm going to move these now two. And then select these two as well. Move it down two more. And then move this one two more. So now in between each of these joints, is a three frame offset, including the base as well. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And now if we press play, we can see the base is already turning around, but the pendulum continues to swing through. And so there we go, I think it looks pretty good. So with that, I'm gonna go through really quick and just set up my scene to create a play blast. I'm gonna create a camera. Call it render cam. Go to two panel mode. Go to my render cam view. Turn on my resolution gate. We can be pretty close on this because it's not going anywhere. And from here, I'll turn off my grid. Turn off NURBS curves. Lock the camera, go to render settings, and just make sure that's a nice 1080p. I'll go to playback, play blast. Make sure that's saving to a file. Let's call that stationary pendulum. Do the scale of one, quality of 70. Display size from render settings and I hit play blast. Whoops, forgot to drop my resolution gate and I'll do that one more time. And that looks pretty good so far, but it's feeling a little bit unmotivated. Like the swinging of the pendulum is just sort of happening on its own still. But I think because the base is a little too stationary. So I'm going to go back and add just a little bit of side to side movement to drive the swinging of the pendulum. So I'm just going to move this to about 0.5 on the Z translation. It really doesn't need to be a lot. And of course, I'll keyframe that. Then frame 24, set that to negative 0.5. And then on 48, 0.5 again. And I'll just grab that and make sure it has pre and post infinity. And there we go. That feels a little bit more natural. In fact, if I offset this animation to the left by three frames, that feels even better because now it feels like the movement is leading the rotation, which is leading the swinging. And there we go. In just a few minutes, I've created a nice little pendulum swinging animation. So for this next animation, I'm going to have this pendulum actually move around my frame a couple of times. And it's not going to be a looping animation, so we're going to actually see that pendulum come to a stop. So this is going to be a little bit more complicated, but not much more of a step up from the previous animation. So first things first, I've already put my pendulum in the starting position that I have in mind. I'm going to key it right there. So does that translate Z12? And let's say maybe it takes... Uh, two seconds to get to the other side of the screen, so negative 12. 
Let's just test that out. All right, that's pretty good. I think I want it to actually be, let's say 10, negative 10. Let's make it go a little faster than that. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I want to stay there for a little bit because I just want to see the effect of the pendulum as it just sits in that spot. So I'm going to go to frame 52. I'm going to copy this keyframe, paste it there. And then let's just say frame 72, the pendulum moves up to here. Like this frame a flat three. So 4.5. And actually, I'm going to key this here. And then I'm going to go back to this frame right here and make sure that this is a keyframe at value zero. All right. So it goes over here, up to here. All right, next I want to add some rotation to this so it kind of leans into each movement. So I'm going to keyframe the rotation on frame one. And then let's say when it reaches its top speed on frame 18, which is the halfway point between one and 36, let's say this goes to negative 20. And the last frame goes back to zero. That looks okay, but it's a little stiff. Let's say we, we want to have it swing back the other direction afterwards when it comes to that stop. So maybe instead of going to zero, it goes to 15. There we go. But it doesn't need to swing back the other direction. Otherwise, it shouldn't just stop here. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six. In six frames, it goes back to 10, negative 10, two, three, four, five, six. Then in more, six more frames, it goes to rotation five. And then just as it starts to move again, it's at, it's leveled out to zero. Let's just see what that looks like. So this last part at the end feels like it's a shaking a bit abruptly at the end. So I'm going to grab all these keyframes, including the ones where it's moving, and move them down two frames. And then deselect this frame and move it down two more frames. Deselect this frame, and then two more times. And deselect this one. And I'm going to move down these translation ones all the way down to frame 66, just so we can see it stop. And there we go. That feels pretty good. Now, the important thing here is that with each rotation, the amount that it rotates is a little bit less. So right here it is at 20. And this keyframe, it swings the other way to 15, which is less power than when it was swinging to 20. And then it swings back again, it goes to 10, and then to five, and then zero. So each time it's losing just a little bit of power and then I'm going to make this animation longer, make it 140 frames for now. And we can do the same thing again here. So 66, 86, the middle point would be 76. So we can set this to a rotation of 20. And just making sure it on the frame where it stopped. Just gonna set 
the rotation is zero, so it rests for a couple frames leveled out. And then same thing as before. So this can be negative 15. So it takes eight frames to go to the next side. Let's make that 10. Five. Oops. Negative five. And one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Zero. And we'll just see how that feels. Now, with how much quicker this swung, I actually feel like the rotation should be more extreme because it takes a lot less time for it to get to this point. So I'm going to make this a negative 18 or even a negative 20 again. I'll make this five. I'll just add five to each of these. So it's going to be negative 10. This one will be five. And then eight more, zero. There we go. That feels a little more justified. Great. So now with that done, we can work on the pendulum. Now this is going to be the tricky part because now we need to account for it slowing down and speeding up. But Luckily, we could just copy these values. In fact, if I really wanted to, I can shortcut this by copying this X rotation on the base. Select all these keyframes. And then I'm just going to make sure this is keyed. And then when I select rotate X here in the graph editor, I'm going to just paste those frames. And then I'm just going to press F to view them all in the graph at the same time. And now all the same exact rotations are following through to the next joint. And I don't have to reinterpret all of that animation again. And so I'm just going to do the same thing with each of the other joints. So now it's just a matter of adjusting. So just like before, I'm going to select all these. And we found last time that moving in increments of three really helped. So I'm just going to do that. So one, two, three. Again, one, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Now, that's a decent start, but I think I want the pendulum to be swinging a little bit more, especially on this second one. It feels like that force of the movement should transfer into more swings. So on this controller, I'm just going to go ahead and pull that down a little bit. That's five. Let's say this should be negative 2.5. Let's say maybe I want these these moves to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to select these three keyframes here and I'm going to press R. With my mouse held over the zero value, I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to hold middle mouse button. And just drag up a little bit to scale all of these around wherever my mouse is held. So if I had my mouse down here and scaled them, they'd all go up. Or I held my mouse up here, they'd all go down. If I move it from the middle point, right between them, right on the zero value, they'll all scale in proportion to zero. 
So I've just made that base movement of this joint just a little bit stronger. And now what I can do is I can copy all these frames and go to the next joint. Go to where I had them start before and I'll just delete these and paste in the new ones that I just made on this joint. And I'll go down to this joint and the same thing. Go to frame 10, delete all these, paste the new ones. We'll just see how that looks. There, I like that a lot better. All right, and we'll do the same thing here. I think the problem here again is that it just does not swing far enough. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is another negative 2.5. And then eight, eight frames later, it'll settle down to zero. But we'll select all of these. And we'll just scale them up. Maybe not that much. We don't want this return swing to be greater than the initial movement because it won't have enough power to swing further than this point. Now, I don't think I want to delete the whole curve on each of these joints. So instead, I'm just going to copy all the frames from this swing going to the left. I'll copy all these. Go to here. And I'll just delete that back half of the animation and paste the new version there. And same thing here. Delete and paste. And now let's see how that looks. So now here's where I'm going to sort of break the pattern I've had so far. Because really, it feels like I'm like right around here. This bottom should whip out like that. So I'm just going to do just that. I'm going to make this frame in particular exactly how I want it to look. And then we'll figure out the rest out from that point. There we go. See how that whips out? And then I'm even going to go down three more frames and just continue to get that custom look down. Feels like it's really whipping around. There we go. And that feels really nice. And then I'm going to go to the second joint here to continue to emphasize this really strong first swing. This should be further out. Not sure what's going on with this curve right here. So I'm just going to, I think I could just delete that frame in this frame. Sometimes you just see keyframes like that that are feel a little necessary and get rid of them. Look out for another point like this, where it feels like this should swing back the other way. Now that second swing feels really good, but now the power is exceeding the initial power of the original movement. So I'm going to raise this keyframe here to give it more power on the initial translation. There we go. So just keep going through and feeling out what is sort of the natural swing of this pendulum. Think about the power that's going into it from that initial movement and how that will die off with each swing.
And there we go. Before long, you'll have a nice pendulum swing. Try not to get too lost in the weeds. All this is a little bit up to interpretation because we don't know the exact weight of this pendulum. We don't know the stiffness of the chain here. We don't know how much weight is at the bottom here. So all of those would have an effect on this and it's really kind of up to you to sort of interpret what you think it feels like. I'm imagining the bottom of this being pretty heavy, but it could actually be pretty light. I could also keep working on this. I, I see a few areas where I would probably tweak it a little bit, but I'm happy enough as it is for the purposes of this video. Go ahead and give it a try yourself. Go ahead and try your own different movements. It doesn't need to be this exact horizontal to upward diagonal movement. It can be really, you could try up and down. You could try spinning the base in one of them. Try all sorts of things. Anyway, with that, I wish you the best of luck and I hope you have a good day.